So um, welcome to the Academic Data Science Alliance Data Science Education Special Interest Group call. I'm glad to see so many people here. Um, today we're going to be hearing uh, from two speakers about the Open DS for All Curriculum Project program. They can say more about what we should call it and and uh, how we should refer to it uh, when they when they start talking. Um, so we'll we'll give the speakers uh, a chance to give their presentation and then maybe have some time for conversation and questions. Um, as I mentioned before, the call is being recorded. So if you want to revisit uh, or if you have to leave early, uh, we'll be sharing a link out. Um, and then the last thing before we get started is that I've shared in the the Zoom chat here, a link to a document that folks can use to um, take notes if they'd like to. Um, there are a couple of resources about the project we'll hear about, um, also some, some resources about ADSA in that document, so have a look at that. Um, but uh, without any further blabbering on my behalf, why don't we get started with uh, some introductions and then the presentation. Go Can you ahead. put it in presentation mode, Andrew? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Echeverry, and I'm here with Andre Dewar. We both work for IBM, and we are very grateful for the opportunity to talk about our project, OpenDS for All, um, with you today. Um, so Andre, if you go to the next slide. So, this project actually, or the idea for this project, originated a couple of years ago. So at IBM, we kept dealing with our clients, uh, dealing with data science skills shortages and not being able to find all the people that they needed. Uh, we had a lot of conversations with universities, especially smaller universities, universities outside of the U.S., and they were all experiencing this situation of we want to build a data science program but in some cases it was like well we're the computer science department we don't really know what building a data science means in other cases it was like we're super interested but we don't have the resources to actually build a full curriculum from scratch um, this is a chart from about a year ago uh, in terms of the masters of data science, business analytics, and data analytics. And up to that moment, there were only about 250 plus programs, which really, you know, it's a tremendous growth in the past few years. But when you look at the need in the market, uh, it's actually not enough uh, to supply all the skills needed. And, and granted, uh, for many years, ma these master's programs were the only way to, to get to the skills. And, and now there's more and more undergraduate programs um, come into the forefront, um, but we really felt like there was an opportunity for IBM to actually try to have an impact and try to help organizations around the world accelerate how they build their data science uh, programs. So when we started the conversation, and Andre, you can go to the next slide, we, we were thinking universities exclusively, and we were really kind of thinking around the, the master of science. But then we realized that the, the need was much bigger and the opportunity for really different entities or different institutions to contribute to the skills creation was there. So, you know, we started talking to community colleges, um, organizations that deliver services in the technology space with a lot of interest in, in actually helping drive the creation of these skills. And, um, and even corporations that have their own training departments. So that was an interesting thing there because uh, many years ago, most corporations used to have very solid training departments. They, that all got dismantled, uh, you know, dealing with cost reduction efforts. And, and now we're kind of back to the place where it's like, oops, you know, we kind of need to keep our people uh, up, upgrading their skills. And yes, there may be uh, unlimited options digital, but for some instances, that face-to-face -face or that opportunity to teach directly is really relevant. Um, we put K through 12 here because, you know, if you walk back on the skills needed, there's actually a tremendous opportunity for starting to build the right skills before getting to actual data science, uh, uh, really uh, at the very, uh, very early um, stages. 
So uh, when we started with this idea of can we build a curriculum set or a curriculum kit to help these organizations get started? So they don't have to build everything from scratch. They can take something, teach it as is, make it their own. Uh, we started having conversation with several universities. You can go to the next slide, Andre. And um, so we, we made some two very important decisions. So the first one was, um, we're not gonna make this an IBM centric thing. So this is not about IBM technologies. This is about skills in the market. Uh, we made the decision to go with Python because we've seen uh, the adoption of Python in the field of data science to just be growing so rapidly that we felt uh, that was probably the right decision for this for this curriculum. So it's built completely using open source language. Uh, the other decision that we made was let's not make this again an IBM curriculum. So let's work with the university so that it's built by professors for professors. And we had conversations with um, several universities and actually the University of Pennsylvania were the ones that were like ready to go. They were like, we're, we're on it. We, this completely meets uh, what we as a university want to do, contributing to the world outside of, you know, the, the four walls of the university. And, and I'm happy to see that Susan Davidson is, is joining us here today because she's uh, one of the brains uh, behind this project. So we really made an emphasis on this being something that was built with that uh, professor's uh, expertise so that other professors can leverage. The next decision was, let's not just put this under some random IBM website so that people can download it, but let's ensure that there's potential growth uh, and, and opportunity for community participation as, as this kit, as we call it, is being built. So we partnered with the Linux Foundation to launch this as an open source project. Linux Foundation governs uh, a lot of very significant open source projects in the market. And they were actually very excited to see uh, an education project being brought to market as an open source project. So what this means is um, we went live at the end of February, like right before the world started falling apart. And um, we, all the uh, curriculum kit, the educational materials live on GitHub. So any uh, university's faculty with a lot of expertise in this field can contribute to the project, add modules that do not exist, um, you know, update things as things change towards the future. But we also look for, the goal of this was really to accelerate the creation of data science programs. So um, this gives the opportunity for any institution around the world to take the materials and, and build from them their own data science programs. Um, so with that, uh, Andre will talk to you about the status of the project today and, and how you know, we would love to collaborate with you uh, moving forward. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Hope you can all hear me clearly. So, the with the uh, contribution of UPenn, uh, we've got currently fifteen uh, lessons in the repository, and the lessons try and span uh, <clears throat> much of data science. Obviously, data science is vast, and it's impossible to incorporate everything that is covered by data science into 15 lessons, but I'll show in a couple of slides how we organize the content and what is currently available on GitHub. So I've made a list here of the 15 uh, topics that's covered or the 15 lessons. Some of the lessons will uh, actually be longer than 50 minutes. We'll probably we take two or three sessions to go through some of the lessons, especially the supervised machine learning, the neural network uh, lesson is quite substantial. So we have an introductory lesson on data science. Then under the fundamental category, we have uh, how your computer works, some basic uh, information about CPUs and computer architecture. Uh, the next uh, lesson is getting started in data science. Obviously data acquisition and data wrangling is extremely important. The next one is information visualization, visual analytics. Very important to visualize your data, especially if you work with big data. The next five lectures have a slight computer science 
<clears throat> flavor to it. And in the world of big data, parallel processing, distributed processing is extremely important. Also, if you work with social network uh, data, you have graph data, and then uh, how to do things efficiently, uh, given the computing resources you have available. And then one of the most famous algorithms out there, PageRank from Google, how to rank uh, web pages. Uh, this, there's a, a lecture on that. So <clears throat> all about big data, these five, they are kind of grouped together in uh, big data and uh, efficient processing. Then we get to our uh, unsupervised and machine learning, supervised and unsupervised uh, machine learning lessons. So we have one on unsupervised machine learning, which basically covers principal component analysis and k-means clustering. Then we have a lesson uh, introduction to um, uh, supervised machine learning covering decision trees and random forests. Uh, another lesson on obviously you have to include linear and logistic regression as these are the, the techniques that are uh, used most in industry and then we have a substantial lesson on artificial neural networks. Uh, after you've built all your models obviously you have to make sure your models are robust and you should be able to compare models so training robust models is another lesson and then ethics is more and more in the news these days with data breaches and the ethical and unethical use of data. So there's a lesson on data science ethics. So this is what we currently have. Obviously, there's a lot more uh, to data science. For instance, you can think in the supervised machine learning, reinforcement learning, you can kind of name many, many topics. So, um, but this is what we have and we think we cover the basics of data science with these 15 uh, modules. So to make sure that this project is governed in uh, a good uh, way, we uh, constructed a technical steering committee asking professors from leading universities in the US to help us to uh, govern this project and to steer it in the right direction and to give guidance. So first of all, we have David Mongo from the Berkeley Institute of Data Science at University of California, Berkeley and I believe he's part of the Academic Data Science Alliance as well. Then we have Susan Davidson, Professor at the Computer and Information Science at UPenn, uh, with Zach Ives. Ives, they were the two professors with a couple of their PhD students that developed the content for us. Then we have Jennifer Priestley, also a professor at uh, the Analytics and Data Science Institute, Kennesaw State University. She is the first professor that had uh, I think if I remember correctly, a PhD program in big data approved by the state of Georgia and 20 sponsored positions. We have Professor Eric Labar from the Institute of Advanced Analytics at NC State. Uh, and then uh, the last professor is Professor Gautam Chakraborty. He is uh, uh, from the Spear School of Business from Oklahoma State University. So we selected uh, members for our technical steering committee to cover a wide range of universities from marketing to the basic sciences to computer science and uh, advanced analytics institute at NC State as well. Then from companies it's Anna uh, and myself I'm the chairperson of the technical steering committee and we have James Arun from SAS Institute so um, we envision that other companies will also join us as there's a large push into open source and uh, all the issues <clears throat> companies experience with lack of skills uh, is experienced by all the IT companies. So this is our uh, GitHub page and I usually do this live but I just took a couple of screenshots to give you an idea of what is hosted on GitHub. Very important, so this is the first screen when you get to the GitHub page. Uh, as Anna said, uh, this project was created to accelerate the creation of data science curriculum at uh, curricula at academic institutions, but also for companies that want to upskill their personnel, uh, community colleges, liberal arts colleges that are under extreme pressure to uh, teach their students basic data science, uh, and even for high schools, um, this could be applicable. Uh, just scrolling down on the screen, 
So you might ask, what is the uh, audience, uh, the intended kind of skill level of the student uh, for the created uh, material? So uh, this was targeted at a broad cross-university audience at both undergraduate and graduate level. Extremely important, uh, although uh, we'll see on the next slide, it was developed from a master's uh, course in computer science at UPenn. Uh, this course has been taught to freshmen and PhD students with uh, success. You just have to kind of change how much detail you give and what where you place uh, the emphasis. Some prerequisites that are required uh, from the students, comfort and familiarity with programming in Python, uh, and then also familiarity with probability theory and uh, inferential uh, statistics, basic statistical uh, notions. So how did we organize the content? So we organized the content into categories and obviously there are so many topics in data science if you for instance will look at the word cloud. So this is not trying to represent all the possible categories but we had to stuff, start somewhere. So this is uh, the hierarchy we came up with and we have at least one lesson or content in each of these categories. So we have some uh, overview introductory material to data science. We have foundational modules uh, or lessons, maybe matrix algebra, uh, hypothesis testing and the um, computer architecture falls into this category. Then we have a category on data wrangling and integration one on exploratory data analysis, uh, data and knowledge, uh, knowledge modeling. How do you represent your data using predicate log logic or tables, no SQL databases, things like that. Scalable data processing is the distributed parallel uh, processing and graphs. Then very important, uh, machine learning. And we have four lessons currently on the machine learning. Model assessment, very important. Ethics, and then there's a category for instructor. Uh, resources. So this is a living topology or hierarchy as more content are added we are going to refine this and add more categories but this is uh, I think a good starting point. Now the material that's hosted currently uh, each lesson consists of a set of PowerPoint slides and most of the lessons have accompanying Jupyter notebooks. Uh, the overview uh, lesson doesn't have a Jupyter notebook as well as the one on ethics uh, but we require if uh, anyone wants to submit content that you basically submit an accompanying Jupyter notebook uh, as well with your material. Uh, some of the modules have sample quiz material, some homework assignments and there's additional information available uh, on GitHub. So there's also <coughs> some comments and uh, some notes for instructors, some uh, other material that might be useful uh, if you uh, students are not skilled let's say in Python uh, but most universities teach programming and Python in particular and most universities have uh, introductory uh, modules on statistics so students can uh, either take that or get uh, information from other sources. So uh, given the 15 modules uh, you don't need to use all 15 models to build the curriculum. So here's an example uh, written up by UPenn of how you can construct a curriculum out of these modules. So you could start, for instance, with an overview, the introductory lesson on data science, then a three to four hour lecture on data wrangling, acquiring data, integrating data and data cleansing. Uh, the next lecture could be uh, one or two lectures could be on modeling data, uh, types, graphs, and schemas. And you could leave this one out if you don't have, uh, if you might think that the computer science uh, material covered here would be too tough and too technical for the students to graph. So you could shorten it a little bit, but this example uh, curriculum includes the foundations of computer architecture and then efficient uh, data processing which takes quite a bit of time three to seven hours. Uh, then machine learning so uh, I think it's important to cover uh, most of machine learning given here so unsupervised and then the supervised models as I explained uh, previously. Another lecture on validating and tuning modules 
uh, models and then you could optionally include uh, data ethics, a lesson on data exploration and visualization and big data and the cloud. So um, I've got another 10 or so slides, but maybe it's a good time to uh, open it up for a couple of questions as uh, Steve indicated that some people might have to leave. I can give more details on exactly uh, how it is uh, stored on GitHub and an example of one of the Jupyter notebooks as well as the one of the slide decks. But basically, um, we feel that the aims of this project overlap kind of 90%, if I can state it like that, with the aims of the Academic Data Science Alliance, and that is to further data science education. Uh, so instead of both groups kind of working separately, uh, furthering data science education, it might be a good idea to join forces to see how we can work together and uh, uh, support each other. So what we uh, would like the Academic Data Science Alliance and your uh, network to contribute to the project is we need contributions. So obviously, um, as I've shown, we haven't covered everything in data science and that's an impossible task. Also data science is developing so fast that we need to keep up. And if there are new machine learning techniques, obviously uh, we would like to incorporate that into the repository as well. We also need faculty that are passionate about education to become more deeply involved in the project. We have a technical steering committee and uh, the current members of the technical steering committee are there for a one year appointment. And we would like obviously to uh, have new blood uh, in the technical steering committee as well. So if you feel uh, that's your calling to uh, be part of the uh, project and the technical steering committee, please uh, contact either me or Anna. Here's our email addresses at IBM and we can work with you. Uh, we would love you for you to become deeper involved in the management and giving direction of the project as well. Also, if you see gaps or shortcomings of the current cur 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 curriculum, please point that out to us. And uh, it's good to point it out, but it would be really useful if you can then help us to uh, kind of plug that gap or omission that we have in the curriculum uh, as well. Then lastly, uh, we bring here to the table uh, not a full curriculum, but a set of building blocks that can be used by any school, uh, any college, any organization to start a data science curriculum. So we at IBM, we reach out to universities and community colleges with our university network. Uh, the Academic Data Science Alliance has an outreach program as well and you also work with universities and you are the leaders in the field so obviously other universities look up to the Alliance to help them to start data science programs. So here's a resource available. Uh, use the resource if it fits your purpose or work with us and we can jointly work uh, trying to uh, help universities that struggle with data science to uh, point them in the right direction and get their programs up and running uh, faster. So that's about what I have to say for now. Um, I don't know if Anna wants uh, to comment and uh, then uh, we make it open for questions and I have a dinner. If there's time left, I'll show a little bit more detail on how it's hosted on GitHub. <clears throat> Do we have any questions? I think it uh, would be the most relevant thing. Yeah, so I can see questions in the chat or if folks want to use the raise your hand um, function, I can identify who would like to speak. We have quite a few people on the call. So any questions out there? Not seeing anything, but I, I do have a question. So what what um, what does contribution look like? So you said you're looking for contributions, but I'm wondering how one um, kind of ships gears into contribution mode with this curriculum. Are we just submitting pull requests against the GitHub repository? Um, is there some more formal venue for suggesting new modules or tools to cover? 
Okay, so uh, maybe I can answer that one. So the way we've structured it, and this is all written up, up on GitHub, is if you feel that you have a topic or uh, something that you would like to contribute, first open an issue on GitHub and inform us that you have this idea, uh, maybe out of research or your experience, you would like to contribute, let's say, uh, a module on exploratory data analysis as you're an expert in the field. We'll work with you to uh, 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 decide whether uh, we think there's a, a opportunity or a gap uh, for that contribution to be made and uh, once we've uh, exchanged uh, comments then uh, we'll give you the green light to basically submit your content so again the content is then a set of PowerPoint slides so at this stage the recommendation is you submit at least a set of slides with 30 slides with uh, presenta presenter notes and it should cover at least a lecture of 50 minutes. Uh, if it's uh, one of the technical um, categories, uh, a Jupyter notebook is also required. If it's an overview or about ethics or some other topic, topic and there's not a accompanying Jupyter notebook that is acceptable. So uh, part of this, then the te technical steering committee, once you submit your content, will review the content and uh, decide whether it fulfills the requirements and further the aims of the uh, project and then we'll either uh, accept the content as it is, ask you to uh, modify or change it or tell you that we don't think at this stage the content is right for the repository. So that's the informal uh, process at this stage. We're thinking of formalizing but we want to kind of be able to adjust quickly and change the environment. So it's basically up to the technical steering committee to decide whether there is an opportunity to, to uh, accept the content that you want to uh, present. Great, thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions in the chat. So the first one is, uh, do you have any use cases so far, programs that have adopted the framework? Uh, do you want to answer Anna or, no, or should I? So, so we just launched literally uh, on, on a Friday, right before everything started shutting down and the universities had to move to prioritize uh, going to digital from face-to-face -face education. So we've had to take a little bit of a pause in terms of driving adoption, because, you know, really to be respectful from what, you know, universities are going through. So right now what we are, it's, we're kind of working behind the scenes, but not being very aggressive as to how we look for adopters. And um, we kind of think that this is gonna be more of a play for organizations as they plan their, their 2021 um, curriculums, because um, given the whole situation right now, we are not even sure it could be uh, integrated or adopted by, by the fall semester. Maybe I can just add that we are um, definitely looking for um, institutions that you know that are struggling and uh, it would be great if the institution has already decided that they uh, would like to uh, do data science, uh, they've invested some resources, maybe identified some uh, faculty members so that they don't start from scratch to help them to get to the end point uh, fast. So um, we're definitely uh, open to any suggestions. Uh, you can either um, take it up yourself or work with us and we'll work with you. To, and I think it would be great for us if we can have one success story as just asked. Uh, that we can then present and say, this is how we help this university on the road to data science, and that'll help, uh, I think, uh, people adopt uh, more what we have here available. Great, we have a few more questions here. Um, they're kind of rolling in, which is awesome. Um, so a question, uh, the, the questioner is curious about the K through 12 integration and wondering if there's any coordination with, for example, the Bootstrap community, which has a uh, data science module and lots of experience aligning materials with Common Core. Any thoughts on that? So uh, I'm personally not familiar with Bootstrap. I, um, so, so a couple of thoughts here. So we've had conversations with high schools that are very specialized in, you know, uh, in math and science and STEM fields. And um, so some of them seem to be the more likely scenario because they have more flexibility to adopt different curriculums. 
Uh, we're also working, so IBM has their P-TECH programs, which is, you know, the official IBM programs for K through 12. So we're also working with them to integrate some of these uh, concepts into it. Um, and then uh, the other thing is I actually participated in a, in a workshop in New York where they were looking at the definition of what data science would mean for high school in terms of AP courses and whether um, the college board will consider creating a data science AP path um, at the high school level. Uh, no decisions were being made at, at the time. We just had a workshop with people participating from different uh, walks of life, different organizations that work in the K through 12 space and uh, higher ed. Uh, so we've been a part of those conversations and there's perfect alignment between sort of the goals and, and what the curriculum offer. Um, those decisions sort of at the college board level uh, were not, not ready to make them and they work in, in five year planning cycles. So even if they decide they want to bring something in. It's going to take five years before they implement it. I see another question here about the Journal of Open Source Education, and I'm actually not familiar with that. Could, could Anthony elaborate on what a potential partnership with them could look like? Uh, yeah, uh, again, I learned about this effort back in 2018. I don't know how much uh, momentum it has, but it was designed to uh, uh, have universities, uh, you know, instructors submit uh, their, their modules of da for data science. It could be very domain specific or very general. And um, I, th I think it looks like there's like 21 different packets from various institutions. But um, I mean, I think it's well aligned and, uh, and uh, also have, I'm from Berkeley actually and would love to really contribute to, I'm from the education program, which is a little bit separate from the bids. Um, but yeah, so I think there's some existing efforts that you know can collaborate on and further advance these issues. and. I had a follow-up question too regarding, uh, but I can talk about that later regarding infrastructure support. But yeah, um, you can check out the link. I, I think I posted on there. Yes, and, uh, so we'll anyway. definitely check it out. That's a that's a great suggestion. Um, <clears throat> so the next question there: um, modern teaching methods. I mean, this is just a curriculum. I think universities can decide how to implement it and you know what methodologies they use. Our aim was to fill that gap for those universities that are like, we are dying to get started, but we can't allocate the resources to build the starting set of material. Uh, that was our goal. So how universities end up implementing, using, making changes, they can make complete changes to, to the materials, uh, mix and match. Um, so that was kind of the, 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 the space that we were trying to fill. Um, Yes, there's a lot of universities developing undergrad programs. Uh, a few months ago, I think I had a count of over 50. That's probably a higher number now. Um, so that's a great thing that's going to contribute greatly to the field because that was, you know, a, a situation where for many years um, there was only education at the master level. So uh, this is going to be a great addition to this. Um, infrastructure, Andrea, I'll let you talk about that. Okay, so um, maybe uh, Susan uh, Davidson from UPenn can chip in uh, after I've commented on this. So infrastructure at this uh, stage, we do not provide a specialized uh, Python hub or website where you can go and run the Jupyter notebooks, uh, if I understand the question correctly, but there are many ways, for instance, uh, Google Colab, you can use Docker, you can have a local installation. There are many ways that you can run the, uh, the Jupyter Notebook. So we do not provide infrastructure and computing resources at this stage because um, there are, I think, enough uh, available out there and each university will make its own choice uh, how to run the uh, Python uh, given their particular circumstances. But I will clarify that you, you, when Andre is saying we don't provide it, I, he means as part of this project, but if you are looking for infrastructure, IBM actually has university programs that provide access to universities to any of our technologies. So, you know, if, if there's an interest for that, they can, it's just a matter of literally signing up for one of the academia programs and uh, that gives uh, everyone access to any of our products. 
which some of them integrate uh, Jupyter Notebooks as part of that infrastructure. So for instance, we have SAS Institute as well uh, on the technical steering committee and they have their own platform. So you do not need to uh, run it on either IBM or SAS. You can run it local installation wherever you want. So we have a document giving guidance on the different uh, platforms uh, that you can run the software on. So we're still working on that to refine that, but there is guidance on what you should use uh, to run the uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Okay, the next question, uh, UNC Charlotte. So Andre and I actually met with people at UNC here uh, in Raleigh also, you know, looking and we were very early. We still did not have the curriculum. That's a conversation that we have uh, a pending to go back to them because we, we met a few months ago with uh, UNC here at, at Chapel Hill um, as, as they're looking to build their data science programs. Um, the next uh, question I want to take on because uh, the main barrier, it says the main barrier is job market analysis or reveal data science as a field that requires graduate degree for entry. So um, this is something that at IBM we've been trying to change and we actually built a data science apprenticeship program where we take people uh, not only without uh, graduate degrees, but without degrees, period. Uh, we built this program with an audience in mind of uh, career changes, veterans looking for new job opportunities, um, high school graduates that may not have uh, the opportunity to, to pay for, um, for, for university degrees. So we are really working hard on, on drilling down or on drilling down the, the, the career path to skills. And uh, we actually have... Uh, was one IBM has a lot of apprenticeship programs, but the data science one is considered one of the most successful one where we bring in this literally kids um, with no education and within two years we turn them into data scientists through education mentorship and real world experience so i my personal experience as a hiring manager of data scientists is that it's been more a function of what existed so People with the skills for data science usually came out of graduate degree programs. So it wasn't so much that it was a requirement, but it was more like when you looked at the people they are looking for jobs, the ones that had the skills because there were only masters of science in the field and maybe you know some people doing PhDs working with machine learning, we were kind of limited to that, to the, to that audience of people. But I think that's changing very rapidly um, a lot of the uh, MOOCs, so, such as, you know, Udacity offers some data science nano degrees that we've actually at IBM used internally to upskill some of our people in the past. Uh, Coursera has a lot of data science educational material. So, so we are more focused now on, on people's ability to do things than on actually people having the degree. Okay, um, I have a couple more slides that I can maybe quickly go through uh, and then uh, we could have another five minutes or so for questions in the end. How does that sound? That sounds good, yeah. Okay, so um, so please go to GitHub. You can just ask Google, uh, open data science for all. It will take you directly to uh, the GitHub page. So this is how the content is organized on GitHub and what you really want to go to is the open uh, data science for all the resources. That's where all the content is located, the PowerPoint slides and the Jupyter notebooks. So the um, topology I showed a couple of slides ago is then represented as a hierarchy on GitHub. So it should be easy to find the content. There's also a little search engine on GitHub. You can just search on keywords and it should take you directly to the resources available. So if you instance type in data and knowledge or data wrangling, it should take you directly to these uh, Jupyter notebooks and uh, PowerPoint slides uh, with the keywords in it. So let's look at an example. So there's a set of uh, overview slides, a lesson on what is data science. And this is an example of the uh, set of slides. So very nicely done and with presenter notes to give you uh, hints and guidance on what to say. 
uh, during each of these lessons. So currently there are 15 sets of PowerPoint slides available, uh, some from 30 slides, some over 60, close to 70 slides, spanning multiple 50-minute uh, lectures. So let's look at another example from the exploratory data analysis. Uh, there's a Jupyter notebook, a really nice example from uh, UPenn uh, to get students excited about uh, data science and what you can do with programming. So the first notebook is testing the hypothesis that CEOs of major companies are typically in their 40s or older. So you basically go to uh, Wikipedia and uh, find a table or somewhere on the internet, a table of uh, with the uh, major companies, go to Wikipedia, find their CEOs, there's something called a V card with their birth date on it, and uh, find the birth dates, join a couple of tables, do a bit of at least quite a substantial a notebook. You definitely need a bit of Python experience to be able to, to absorb this. Uh, just doing some web crawling, getting the tables and the CEOs, and then you end up with a nice distribution of age and looking at this distribution of age, you could see that uh, the, the ages of the CEOs, they were born in the 1950s and 60s, so they're probably older than 40 years. So really, really nice accompanying uh, notebooks that illustrate the concepts explained in the uh, sets of uh, slides. So in the machine learning, uh, this is what is covered and we already discussed this, the four lectures on uh, machine learning to just to give an example. As you can see, the sets of PowerPoint slides with the Jupyter notebooks and some extra material. Just a, a note that on GitHub, you cannot directly view the PowerPoint slides it was not designed to do that and the files are quite big so you just hit the download button and open and you should be able to view it immediately so that's not really a barrier uh, to viewing uh, the content uh, once you've seen the content you can download it you can um, make a copy of the repository whichever way you would like to consume the content uh, and then also hopefully contribute content as we explained previously Okay, so that's what I wanted to show. Everything as I showed here is exactly as it is hosted on GitHub. Andre, can you put our, our email addresses again up? Sure. Because I see there's there's a lot of um, you know comments, interesting questions on on the chat, and so I think it would be great to to connect post this call. Okay. And, and have those conversations. So, so here's Andres and, and my email. I would really appreciate it if you, know, if you could follow up with us with, with some of those uh, comments or questions that we were not able to address during the call. Also, if you would like to, uh, I did not put, and maybe this is an omission, Susan Davidson and Zach Ives email addresses here from UPenn. Uh, just contact us and I will forward your requests or suggestions to them as well. Uh, so apologies for that. Great. Do we have any other questions? We have a few minutes left. Um, I wonder if any folks have other thoughts they'd like to share or questions to ask. It's like we're a little quiet. We do have a lot of folks in the chat, as I'm sure you've seen uh, in, on, in and Andre that um, mm -hmm. are interested in collaborating. So um, I've, uh, Anna shared her email. Uh, the email is on the slides here. Um, and I've also added Anna's email to the uh, notes document, which I will put into the chat again, in case you haven't seen that. Um, Steve, I, I also sent you uh, the slide deck, so please feel free to distribute it to everybody. Great, will do. Yeah, any any comments, any collaboration opportunities, really our, our main goal is to contribute to the field of data science and ensure that there's growth and ensure that we're empowering organizations that may, ne may not have the same level of resources to actually build their own programs. So, uh, you know, from from working with universities like, like the ones that are represented in the Alliance for Contributions uh, to uh, really uh, working with you 
uh, as you're probably catalysts for working with other smaller organizations or smaller, smaller institutions um, to help them grow their programs. And, and the beauty of this is that, you know, they can use pieces of it or they can use the whole thing or, they, you know, they can mix and match with other, um, other courses that they have. So, so I think it's pretty powerful. And as well, this is a brand new project, so we look forward to growing it with uh, more expertise, more content, not just on, on let's say, the, the data science or the machine learning algorithms piece, but also use cases. You know, I think the more that we have content that addresses uh, some of that um, translational data science and, and, and going into specific, you know, health related use cases or manufacturing related use cases, I think it may become a very powerful tool moving forward uh, to, to increase education in this field. Great, I think uh, Michaela has a question or comment. Michaela is our director at EDSA. Hi there. Yeah, I, um, I guess it's more of a comment at this stage. So um, one of the other groups that we run at ATSA is around ethics. So we have um, actually two subgroups working on ethics products this year. And one of them is around the data life cycle, where in all of those steps that you're actually highlighting in your curriculum, like data wrangling, data mm -hmm. visualization, where uh, being very thoughtful about the societal implications and stakeholders and ethical questions should be really drawn out and, in, and incorporated at every step. Um, they're working on a visualization, at, well, I would say an interactive tool that will allow um, everyone from you know, entry level kind of learning about data science, especially at the undergrad level, through people who are at the faculty level to uh, walk through scenarios, so case studies at each of the steps and really think through the implications of the work that they're doing. I'm wondering, um, I guess one is just to say that this work is ongoing and whether it might make sense when they're a little further along to kind of think about how those might be incorporated into the work that you're doing. I think that sounds fantastic. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask you, are you familiar with the AI Fairness 360 um, open source project? Um, this is an open source project that originated at IBM and it's focused on gathering um, information from researchers around the world, around the work and uh, for, for fairness and ethics and, and biases. So there's a collection of um, bias metrics, and then there's a collection of uh, bias mitigation algorithms, and they're focused at different stages in the life cycle. Some of them are very focused on identifying biases in data sets. Others are focused on identifying biases as the models are being trained. And then there's others that are focused on identifying biases in a production set. So you have no visibility to the algorithms, but you can detect in practice uh, how bias is, 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 is becoming a part of something that may be in production already. So it's, it's actually maybe a, a good resource for the work that you're doing around ethics because it's all open source. There's a, a researcher from all over the world, not, not IBM, you know, it started at IBM, but once it it's open source, belongs to the world. Um, so there's really interesting um, information there and it's very well documented, you know, with, with videos and education and, and examples and notebooks. So it's a very solid resource for addressing biases across the whole life cycle. That's great. Yeah, we will definitely reach out to them. Um, are you, have you thought about incorporating that work in this, in this project? We, so yes, but we're not there yet uh, because we have to turn a lot of that content into educational materials. And I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the education that's there is more informal. So we need to go in and really analyze, you know, the, 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 what are the learning goals that we need to do and turn some of that content into uh, an actual module that can be brought into, uh, into the project, but, uh, but absolutely. Uh, I put a link to the, to the AI Furnace 360 project on the chat. Um, That's I think great, thank you. everyone, yeah, because yeah. uh, there's, there's a lot, and it keeps updated with the kind of the latest research. It, this is a problem that hasn't been solved yet, right? It's, it's something that, you know, we're trying to address, but it hasn't been completely solved. Uh, 
I wonder sometimes if ever, uh, given that you know data sets represent the the real world and the world is packed with biases. Um, but uh, but it's a very interesting project. We do have one comment slash question here about the virtual conference um, or the the workshop that I think you mentioned. Is do you have uh, thoughts about how we can stay informed about the workshop? Okay, um, I don't completely understand the question. I my sound was breaking up. Um, That's okay. Jess, do you want to just ask your question on the mic? Um, sure. So Anthony had posted about a workshop that is, uh, what is it called? National Workshop on Data Science Education. And I was just asking if it was um, slated for this year. And he'd said that it was being planned to be online virtual this year. And so I was just wondering how to stay informed about that. Oh, great. Yeah, I, we will definitely uh, post something soon. Uh, again, we were planning a physical session in June, end of June, but I think we'll convert a lot of it to virtual and a lot of discussions will be had. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely email at the ATSA community about this, hopefully in the next few weeks. Great, thank you. Um, so it looks like we're kind of winding down. We're, we're heading towards the top of the hour. Um, I want to thank you all for um, coming to our SIG meeting today, and thanks to our speakers for sharing OpenDS for all. Um, I've linked a number of times our notes document in the chat, um, so you can review those notes if you'd care to later on. In that document also, there, there are some resources about the project that we heard about today, and also ADSA, how you can um, stay in touch with us through our website or our data science newsletter. Um, you can find us at the bottom of that document. I'll also send an email around with the slide deck and a link to a recording of the talk if you, um, you know, would like to show your kids this presentation <laughs> later on this evening as part of your new homeschooling regimen, uh, <laughs> uh, or to, to share out to other folks who weren't able to make it today. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for coming, and thanks to our speakers. It's been great to, to hear about this project. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thanks.